Hey there, Solemn Salmon here. As many of you will know, I'm not the biggest fan of the Fleet Manager introduced in the Cherry Update. Whilst it can be a useful tool, it's a tad broken and unintuitive. One of the best fixes for many of its problems is to design your ships manually, deactivating auto-generate and using auto-best with caution. Whilst annoying, this gives you the opportunity to really get into the nitty-gritty of ship design, making sure your corvettes and cruisers are up to scratch, maximizing defense and offense, lasers and kinetics. If you don't fancy such constant micromanagement, then hopefully this video is for you. I'm going to take a look at some of the best ship loadouts at various points in the game, with brief discussion of the pros and cons of various weapons and components. Bear in mind that these are largely my opinion and what I've found to work, and might not represent the mathematically optimum loadouts. As such, if you think you've got a better suggestion, I'd love to hear it and try it out for myself, so make sure to drop a comment. Anyway, let's get started. Destroyers are an interesting ship class in that they'll play a significantly different role within your fleets in the early game than they will in the late. When you first unlock them, they can be a real asset to your fleets. With a variety of section choices, destroyers possess more options in terms of weapons, defences and overall firepower than corvettes, although that does come with a loss in evasion. Still, your default destroyer is much like the default corvette. Three autocannons make up the backbone of your firepower with their plus 100% damage to shields and plus 25% damage to hull. And whilst lasers are great for the medium and final small slot with their bonus to armor damage, the real complementary weapon is the plasma thrower, which deals plus 100% damage to armor in addition to plus 50% damage to hull. Autocannons are ridiculously accurate, and with 75% tracking you can negate a significant amount of your enemy corvette's evasion especially in combination with the Picket Combat Computer's bonus to tracking. Whilst the additional damage dealt by the medium weapon, an improvement on the small slots corvettes are limited to, puts paid to corvette-only fleets. The versatility of the destroyer is shown off well here. Whilst I find the interceptor ship stern to be the better rear section, as it allows for two small slots and therefore a balance between kinetics and energy, you could instead go for the gunship stern, granting a second medium weapon slot and improving your destroyer's ability to engage star bases. Speaking of star bases and versatility though, it's worth mentioning that destroyers are not limited to medium weapons, and can in fact load large size weapons through the artillery bow. In the early game, you won't have access to the weapons that really bring this slot onto its own, but by adding large kinetic weapons to a couple of destroyers in your fleet, you can hit an enemy star base's shields immediately upon engaging, softening them up for your energy weapons once you've closed in. In the late game, this slot should be taken up by the kinetic battery a large slot exclusive weapon that deals significant damage with plus 100% damage to shields and plus 25% damage to hull. Like other kinetic weapons, the battery is poor against armor and it doesn't have the greatest accuracy which means it won't be great against smaller ships like corvettes. Complemented with bonuses from the line combat computer and an auxiliary fire control though, and this destroyer can be powerful enough to help take down star bases, battleships and titans while still nimble enough to evade their even larger weapons. Whilst the kinetic battery is great for taking down shields from range, if you're looking to crunch through armor and hull, you'll need to take a closer look at the Proton Launcher. Pre 2.0, the Proton Launcher and its upgrade, the Neutron Launcher, were held under the same banner as a missile. Now, they've benefited from clarification and are now clearly energy weapons, which is fortunate given that destroyers don't have access to a single section containing a missile weapon slot. Launchers are incredibly destructive dealing the most raw damage per hit of any large size weapon, combined with plus 50% damage to armor and plus 75% to hull. They also have significant range and great accuracy, although they suffer from an incredibly high cooldown to balance them out. Launchers are great weapons and a must have for a number of different ship classes, although their minus 50% damage to shields mean you'll need to back them up with kinetics if you want them to really deal damage. Like the kinetic battery build, Complementing with the line combat computer is great for the increased chance to hit, but you should definitely consider the picket combat computer instead, as its bonus to tracking makes this build a threat to smaller, more evasive ship classes as well, which can potentially be destroyed in one hit with the launcher's stupendous damage. I've got one final build for you now, and it's one for the late game, the picket destroyer. This class is there to free up weapon slots on some of your larger ships and counter fleets running torpedo corvettes, or just missiles and torpedoes in general. It's a very extreme support build, designed purely to close to picket range and do its one job. If your enemy aren't particularly using missiles, it's best to swap out the front section over to the gunship bow, and use a hybrid of the first build in the picket. It's more balanced in terms of offensive use and defense. 
Hopefully these ship builds will give you an edge over your enemies, but bear in mind, the technologies you research and the challenges you face will more than likely require you to play around with these options, so don't be afraid to switch it up if you feel you need to. Anyhow, like and subscribe if this video was of use, and don't forget to drop any suggestions in the comments. This has been Solemn Salmon, until next time.